to whomever this video may concern. Hello, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today, I'd like to define ontologies, explain how they are used, and demonstrate how we can create and use one in Protege, an ontology building software based in OWL, which stands for a web ontology language. I don't get it either. Before I answer the question, what is an ontology? I'd first like to answer, what is ontology as a field of study? Ontology is a field of study in philosophy, defined as a branch of metaphysics concerned with the nature and relations of being. Its etymological origin lies in Greek, where ont means being, therefore ontology means the study of being. For those of you who study Plato, you'll be aware that Plato's idea of forms is one of the most foundational ideas in ontology, one in which Plato believed that all objects in the world, tangible or intangible, have a higher form separate from their real manifestations. For example, the chair you sit in is a real, tangible chair. It is an instance of a chair. But if I were Plato, I might ask you, what is a chair in the abstract? What is the form of a chair? What is the idea behind a chair? Describe a chair such that its properties are untethered from any one particular instance of a chair, and it stands alone as an abstract idea. Such a thing could be described as a piece of furniture built for one person to sit upon. And it comes with a back on which a person can rest their back, so as to distinguish it from a stool. To Plato, this is what the true form of a chair is. Okay, I'll stop saying chair now because it sounds a little weird. Now, I didn't take us through that exercise simply as a review of Intro to Philosophy. Plato's way of thinking will actually be very helpful in building computational ontologies, the kind of ontologies which we will focus on today. Tom Gruber, a computer scientist and pioneer in computational ontology, defines an ontology as an explicit specification of a conceptualization. In addition, he describes the composition of an ontology as a set of objects that we clearly define and a set of relationships between those objects that we explicitly map. So returning to our chair example, if we were to make an ontology of chairs, we could say that a throne is a type of chair, one which is large, bejeweled, and intended for royalty. A throne would then be related to a chair by being a type of chair. We could even say that a throne is a subclass of chairs, a term that we will discuss in detail shortly. Okay, so let's say we have some file on our computer that holds definitions of things and relationships to other things. What can we use that for? Ontologies have been used for many things over the years. As one example, they can be used to merge databases without conflict. An ontology can specify equivalences between objects maybe stating that a chair is the same thing as a person holder. Therefore, when we merge a large database, rather than having a person attempt to verify which pieces of data belong where, we can write a script to consult our ontology, we can automatically merge our data much more efficiently. Another use of an ontology is organizing medical knowledge and terminology, such as the National Institute of Health's Unified Medical Language System, which allows users to search and organize medical terminology, process text to extract concepts, and much more. Ontologies have also been used to find new rubber molecule candidates and new enzymes in chemical labs. In general, ontologies allow us to represent domain knowledge in a computer-readable format, so they provide all of the benefits of making that knowledge computable, including but not limited to searching, classification, and exploration. So what exactly is an ontology made of? Well, I'm glad you asked, random person. We have two main ingredients, classes and properties. Classes are the objects in an ontology. They are the things that we want to represent in our graph of knowledge. If we are making a furniture ontology, we might have a class for chairs, a class for couches, a class for tables, etc. And classes have their own hierarchy, meaning a class can have any number of subclasses. A subclass is an object that inherits all the attributes from its parent class, but differentiates itself in some way. For example, a throne is a subclass of a chair, meaning it inherits all the properties of a chair, like seating one person and having a back, but it is different in that it only seats people of royalty. Our second ingredient, properties, describe the attributes that classes have. So one of the properties of a chair might be that it has legs, and this property differentiates it from a beanbag which has no legs. Color or size could also be properties of a chair, and properties could describe both the values of a class as well as the relationships a class has with another class. With these two ingredients, classes and properties, we're ready to start building an ontology. We'll be using Protege to build an ontology of universities. I know I've been using chairs a lot, but chairs get boring pretty easily, so let's do something much more fun. School. 